Welcome to the next lecture of our Selenium with C Sharp in unit series. In this video, we are going to talk about running Selenium test using in unit test framework in both local machine and in Lambda test platform. In our last video, we talked how we can set up the in unit and how we can install all the prerequisite software within our Windows 10 machine and create a sample test, something like this. And in this video, we are going to write a simple Selenium test and run on the Selenium grid server in local machine and run the same test on the Lambda test platform. So the first thing which I'm going to do is I'm going to install the Selenium dependency within my project. So I'm going to search for Selenium and I'm going to install the Selenium web driver. And while this is happening, I'm also going to invoke the Selenium server for role node and hub so that I can run the test on the Selenium server. So I have started the Selenium hub using the command java hyphen jar, the jar file name hyphen role as hub. So this is going to be the hub, which is going to accept the incoming request. And this is the node java hyphen jar of the Selenium jar file hyphen role as node, which is going to execute operation, which has been specified within our client code over here. So now everything is set up for us. The Selenium dependency has been added within our project and the Selenium grid server is also up and running. So all we're going to do is to point to our this URL to run our test that we're going to be writing. So I'm going to write a very, very simple test, which is already available within our Lambda test platform as a sample test over here and run the same within my local machine and then on the Lambda test platform. So I'm just going to copy the code from here. So you can get all the code for different language binding like Java, JavaScript, C Sharp, Python, PHP, Ruby. For all these language binding, you can get the sample codes and I'm going to be copying the code which is already there on the Lambda test platform. So I'm just going to copy them and I'm going to paste it on the test over here. But as you can see, for running the Selenium test, we require the Selenium driver and we also require the browser which we are going to be executing the test. For this test to run within my local machine, I'm going to actually run just on the Chrome browser. So I need the Chrome options to be specified for the iWeb driver. So I'm going to create a private variable for iWeb driver and I'm going to add the reference by hitting control dot and I'm going to add the reference using openqa.selenium and I'm going to set up the Chrome options as Chrome options as new Chrome options. Because we're going to be running the test on the Selenium grid, we need to invoke the remote web driver. So I'm going to call the underscore driver is equal to new remote web driver. I'm going to add the reference and I'm going to specify the new URI local host that we are running within our machine and we need to add the reference for the URI and then we need to pass the capability which is nothing but the Chrome options dot to capability. So this way we are ready to go with running our actual test on the Chrome driver. But since we have specified the underscore driver and the copy paste code is actually of driver, I'm going to replace this code to just driver. So this way it's going to run the test for us. And I think the send keys is going to be first item. And I don't really want to do any assertion at the moment. I'm just going to remove them. So this is the test that is going to be running within our local machine right now. And since we have a setup, we also need to perform a teardown, which is going to close the driver for us. So I'm just going to do that as well, which is going to be looking something like this. So now that our code is fully ready, but before running the test, we also need to first navigate to the URL, which we are actually interested in, which is nothing but the Lambda tests sample to do app. So I'm just going to do that as well. And everything is right now ready for us to run the test. So I'm just going to right click the test and I'm going to hit run test so that it is going to run the test for us. And you can see that the capability is being received and the browser is launched and the Selenium test has been executed, which is quite good. So our test is actually running fine within our local machine. The next step is to run the same test on the Lambda test platform. 
So in order to run the test on the Lambda test platform, all you need to do is to sign up for a free account within your Lambda test platform and start running the test straight away. And you also get a concurrent session of two, which means you can run the same test parallelly for two browsers in two different environments. So I have already logged within my Lambda test platform and I already have access to all the greatest features which the Lambda test offered to me. At the moment, you can see within the automation tab, there is no test available and I have not executed any test at the moment. And I'm gonna run my first test within the Lambda test platform. In order to do that, I need to connect my local test to the Lambda test platform using access keys, which I can obtain from my profile in the settings and I can grab the access token which is available for me over here. Not only that, we can also get a detailed information of how to connect the local machine code with the Lambda test platform if you go to the automation tab and if you click the get started option, you will get all the information of how you can actually connect. So in order for you to connect your test from your local machine to the Lambda test platform, you actually require the username the access key, additional desired capabilities. Within this capability, you can actually see that there is a lot of information already available. Something like the platform which you're gonna be running the test for, the browser name, the version, and the resolution, and the build name, and the network. Do you want to capture the visual information, the video information, or the console log? So you can specify all these additional capabilities within your Chrome option and then you can run the test. So these are the things that you can actually get as a template within the Lambda test and then you can run the test for. And since we may also require to run the same test on different browsers, not just on the Chrome browser, but also in the Firefox browser or Safari browser and in different platforms like Mac OS Big Sur, the capability changes and you can actually grab those capability values from here. So you can choose the capability is something like Mac OS Big Sur. And if you choose the browser as Safari, then you can see that the value will be reflected for you automatically. And if you think you actually need to get this information without logging into the Lambda test platform, then you can search for Lambda test capability generator. And if you select this URL, you can see that the same options that you get from this page will be obtained from here as well. So you can choose the version of Selenium that you're using and you can see that it will show you the Chrome options and its capability that you need to be adding for. So this time we actually require not just the remote capability option, but also the additional capabilities option. And because we were running the test on our local machine before, we actually used the URL something like this. And because this time we'll be running the test on the Lambda test platform, the URL will be a bit different. And if you go over here, you can see that the URL will be something like this. The username colon access key at hub.lambdatest.com slash wd slash hub. So this is the URL of the hub that we will be running the test for. So we can actually grab the code even from here so that we can save our time. So I'm just gonna copy that and I'm gonna be pasting that over here and I'm actually gonna replace them a bit, something like this. And the username and password is gonna be something that I will be specifying in from within my test. So let me just comment this code for now and let's try to do it from the beginning. The first thing which I require to run my test is actually the capabilities and also the username and the access key properties. So in order to do that, I'm actually gonna be creating a series of properties which I require to run the test for. So these are the properties which I require right now. The browser, the version, the operating system, the name of the build, the username, and the access key to connect to the Lambda test platform. And I need to initialize these value from within my test using a constructor, something like this. So this is the constructor which is going to initialize the whole value that I'm gonna be passing in. And then I'm gonna create the capabilities which is required for running 
the test on the Lambda test platform. So I'm just gonna use this. The Chrome option, add additional capability. And over here, I'm gonna specify something like the platform, which is gonna be the operating system which I'm actually getting in. And I need to set the is global capability as true because this is a global property that we are going to be assigning within our capability. And similarly, I need to assign the Chrome option with additional capabilities, something like the version name and the build and the access tokens, which is going to be looking something like this. So the version, the name, the build, the username and the access key that we have specified. So we have set all the values over here. Now we are pretty good to go with setting this particular Chrome options as a capability within our Lambda test URL that we have. So the URL now I have uncommented and I'm actually going to set this particular value using the username that we have got, which is nothing but the LT username colon LT app key. And let me remove the additional plus sign. And then the capabilities is going to be the Chrome options dot two capabilities. And with this, we can see that we are now all set to run the test on the Lambda test platform. I'm going to comment the local test which we were running before so that we can use this anytime if we wanted to. And now this is the Lambda test connectivity. And now you can ask me, where is this information of the platform versions name and the operating system is going to be coming from. Well, we can obtain this information using what is called as the test fixture of the N unit. So I'm going to be using that particular option to initialize the value for me. I mean, this is the same concept which can be used even for our parallel test execution, but I'm just introducing this already so that we can understand that much better in our next video. So now that our test is already available with browser, its version, the operating system, and the name of the test that we're actually executing. So you can see that all these information is already available. And now we can try running this test and see how it actually works. So to recollect, we have already set the test fixture to run on different environments. And we have created the connectivity with our Lambda test platform using the username and the access token. And then we are passing these capabilities within the remote web driver so that we can connect within our Lambda test platform. So now everything is all set and I'm going to run the same test that we executed using Selenium web driver, but this time we're going to be running that in the Lambda test platform. So let me build this solution and you can see that the test actually changes with the capability name. And now I'm going to run this test. So once the test start executing, if we go to the Lambda test platform to the automation, you can actually see that there will be a new test coming in, which is the parallel test, which we are currently executing within our machine. And if I click this parallel test, it also shows like what is the capability that we have chosen to run the test for. It's a Windows 10 machine and on the Chrome browser. And you can see it is super fast that our test has already executed. And if I run the play button, you could actually see that the test is has currently executed and it has also recorded test execution for us. So this way, it is very, very easy for us to run the test on the Lambda test platform in a much simpler fashion. In our next video, we'll discuss how we can run the same test on multiple different browsers in multiple different versions and in multiple different platforms using Serenium's parallel test execution with any units parallelizable attribute in the Lambda test platform and we'll see how easy it is to set up an environment and run the same test in multiple different platform using Lambda test platform in much simpler fashion. In case you have any questions or you require any further information, you can chat with the team or you can also drop us an email at support at lambdatest.com. We're here to help and we'd love to hear from you. Subscribe to our channel to stay on top of exciting features on your way. Happy testing!